if you're here from last time or just new here, um, we have been having some pretty serious engine issues. We're at wit's end, um, and we have some decisions to make about what in the world we are going to do. And we've made a decision about what we are going to do. And we thought we'd walk you all through kind of our thought process on how we came to the decision we came to. Just to recap real quick on what we've had to do in just the last nine months, we've had to replace the head gasket. We've had to rewire the fuel pump. We've had to replace the raw water pump. We've had to put in new fuel injectors, three of them. One of them we had to replace twice. And then finally, we've had to install a new exhaust manifold. And since we've done all of that, we still have an engine that's blowing white smoke, which was what we thought the issue was with the fuel injectors and then also with the exhaust manifold. Clearly, n neither of those things has solved that problem. We have the engine is hiccuping and sputtering to the point at which we are both like having to tell each other if we're going to change the RPMs on the engine at all, because we're both on edge so much about it, like starting to lower in RPMs or speed up in RPMs by itself, because it happens so frequently. Most recently, it's now blowing blue smoke, which is kind of the blue screen of death equivalent of a diesel engine. <laughs> we have a few options on what we can do to resolve this issue and kind of get us back moving without pulling our hair out. The first option is to fix our Westerbeek again. Pros on that. It would be the cheapest option. It would also lead to the least amount of downtime. However, both of those items are debatable because at this point, one of the cons is we just feel like we're throwing good money after bad um, and that we're just kicking the can down the road and that it's just like playing whack-a-mole. So even if we did take the engine to a shop, let them completely pull it apart, rebore everything, do all of that kind of stuff, we're still looking at a pretty significant amount of downtime and a significant amount of cost if we even if we went that far. If we continue to try to put band-aids on it, we're going to be looking at the exact same frequency and what we've been spending yeah. going forward. And it's essentially been a part-time job for Andy, and that's not fair. He's not able to enjoy what we're doing as much as I am, and it's taking a lot of fun out of cruising. So we've decided that that is not an option. Second option is probably the most drastic, which is... Selling the boat. Do we sell E. Cola and look for something that could potentially be a little bit bigger, which would be a pro? Mm -hmm. something that's outfitted for exactly what we want. Like we have, we, I think every cruiser has like their potential next boat wish list because you're constantly saying like, Oh, wouldn't it be nice if we just had like a little bit more space here or if we had an oven. <laughs> um, but the cons are that that would be the most expensive option. We currently own Ecola outright. We don't have a mortgage on this boat. We have never had to have a mortgage on this boat. And a new boat would either be starting from scratch with a refit project, which we just finished a massive renovation on this boat. We don't want to start again. But you guys may want to see that. <laughs> so just, just hold on. There might be something down the road. <laughs> Sometime. Sometime. There might, Not in the know. next couple of years, so we need a break. Um, and it also would mean the most downtime because we would have to sell E. Cola, which would probably happen very quickly because we are in a buyer's, a uh, seller's market for boats right now. Um, but we'd also have to find a boat in our budget. And right now that would probably be pretty much impossible. Um, boats are going for way too much money right now, in my opinion. Um, and we also don't want to have to take a mortgage out on a boat. We don't want to have to carry full insurance. We only carry liability insurance and we don't want to have to do more than that. Um, that's a huge, huge expense. That's a massive expense in cruising. And that's one of the reasons that we're able to do what we're doing. Plus we're stupid and we'd probably buy another classic plastic. <laughs> yeah, we would. <laughs> so we have decided that we are keeping a cola because we love her and um, we are not ready to part with her yet. So 
not selling the boat. Option three is that we replace the engine with a brand new one. Not brand new to us, but brand new to this planet. <laughs> The pros of this are that we get to start completely fresh. Earl, our Westerbeak, we has unknown hours. We know we've put 500 on it in the last year. That's since we replaced the hour meter thingy. But we'd be able to have like a real maintenance log that's not just guesstimations on some of the stuff. Unknown hours plus 500 hours is still unknown hours, which means that basically the engine is worthless if we were to ever sell the boat. Other pros of this is that it just takes a huge amount of stress out of the maintenance of the engine. A newer engine would require no repairs. Yeah. Obviously. Just scheduled maintenance. Just scheduled maintenance. And the scheduled maintenance is way less than the one we have now. The cons are it's the middle of the road in terms of our downtime and it's the middle of the road in terms of expense. It is not a cheap option and we'll never see the full value out of putting an engine back in if we were to sell the boat. Um, so you're basically looking at something that's going to be a net loss eventually even though you do get some use out of it. But we have decided to... Replace the engine. Which is actually pretty exciting. It's pretty exciting. <laughs> the one that's in there now is 34 years old. Yeah. My dad installed it into the boat when I was six months old. Now that we've decided that we're replacing Earl and we're keeping a cola, the next thing we had to decide was what are we going to replace the Westerbeek with. And there are really three options here. You can go with an outboard, you can go electric, and you can go with a diesel. Let's start with outboards. Outboards, they sound like a good idea and they work for a lot of people, I guess. But for what we do, it's just not going to work. We, we really enjoy doing the ICW. Yeah. And slapping an outboard off the back is not going to look the greatest. And that and converting the lazarette into an outboard well, just really not our cup of tea. And it stresses me out to think of a hole that big in the back of the boat. Yes. Like I know that it's a huge, it's a huge project, even bigger than swapping an engine. Yeah, it's enormous. It's an enormous project to re-engineer the boat like that. And then there's also the part about you can basically only use an outboard in the calmest of conditions. Because if you get in a big sea, that propeller is coming out of the water. And that includes when you get waked by another boat or just get like, yeah. So we have crossed out the outboard. <laughs> <laughs> Second option is electric, which is all the rage right now. All the rage. Um, I think we would, you know, we can, I think we could call ourselves true YouTubers if we actually switched to an electric engine. <laughs> So we switched to an electric motor. Um, there are definitely some pros to an electric motor. We really like the idea of it being a lot more eco-friendly. Uh, we the like noise. the idea of not having the noise. We like the idea of not having to carry diesel fuel on board. Or oil. Or oil or any of that stuff. Any of that stuff. There's a lot of perks. Hell like, of a lot like of perks. Like the infinite or like an RPM range. There's so many great perks to electric. Don't get us wrong. We are not completely saying that electric's bad, but it's not for us. The way we want to cruise, um, it's just not going to work. We have serious range limitations with the batteries available for us. Yeah. And from a safety perspective, we're really, really on the conservative end of things. And the idea of not being able to have the engine as a true auxiliary source really scares the crap out of me. But at the end of the day, electric sailboat, you have essentially a boat with a one gallon fuel tank. Yeah. That takes eight hours to fill. Yeah. The last piece about the electric is that it would require us to modify how many batteries we have because our current battery bank wouldn't be able to keep up. We would need to probably double what we, we have. We have to go to a 48 system and require a lot of re-engineering of the systems, which would be a huge amount of downtime for yeah. where we are. Which is part of the reason we're going with a replacement instead of some of the op or options anyway. So electric is not happening either. 
Which leads us to the last option, which is diesel. Dinosaur squeezings. Dinosaur squeezings. We have decided to go with a... But we're going to go with the Beta 20. And we are so excited. I haven't seen Andy so excited about something in so long. You've been like a kid in the candy store since we kind of made the decision. Um, and you basically have just like, he's been finding like all these like things he's so excited about about it. And it's been fun to watch. So 250 hour oil changes. <laughs> I'll let you talk about what you were excited about and why we chose the beta. So there's a couple of different manufacturers we looked at. We looked at uh, a Volvo and we looked at a Yanmar and we looked at the beta Marine. Um, we did look briefly at Westerbeek for another one because it lasted a long time, but they don't sell engines anymore. And the parts are so crazy expensive. <clears throat> Probably because they don't sell engines anymore. The Volvo, the parts are, was the cheapest option, but the parts are absolutely ridiculous. The Yanmar was difficult to find a dealer who would want to give us a quote and stuff like that. I think they mostly do OEMs and not very interested in selling me a single engine. A direct. Yeah, <laughs> yeah they... <laughs> and we're not big fans of people who just like clearly don't want to deal with us. If you don't want to deal with us, you don't need to take our money. So... <laughs> The last one is the Beta Marine, so it's, and they were great. They've been super easy to deal super with. Super easy so far. to deal with. All, um, for our particular application, an Allberg 30 with the engine axis is in the front. The Beta has all the service points in the front: the oil filter, the fuel filter, the impeller is smack dab right there in the front. And if you have a Westerbeek 18, you know how important this is. <laughs> How big of a deal this is. I think that the service points has been the thing you've been the most excited about. The service points is one of the things I've been the most excited about. And then the final thing is they have the motors in stock in North Carolina ready to ship them out. They're also, their price point is they're selling you the engine. So the engine might be a little bit more expensive, but when we looked at the parts list, like the, the parts price, the parts prices are so, so cheap. Like a brand new raw water pump was 150 bucks. Mm-hmm. Versus how much? 500, 600? 600 from, for the West Creek one. The last part about the beta that was really a selling point for us is that it's essentially drop in. The mounts are almost in the exact same position as the West Creek, which is going to make installing this much quicker. Yeah. And much easier. Yes. And it's also, so some other pros are that it's smaller. Like the actual cubic volume it takes up is significantly yeah. smaller. It's smaller in almost every direction, which is also Unfortunately, we had to buy a new longer prop shaft because the engine is shorter. Other nice thing is it is how much lighter? 150 pounds lighter. Than the old engine, which is ridiculous. We're so excited. So to lose 150 pounds off of a equal as a waistline is going to be a huge improvement to where our water line sits. What else? Oh, it's red. <laughs> I don't know why that's... It's got beautiful red paint. <laughs> I don't know why that's such a big deal, but... And the other thing that I really like is they don't paint the hoses. All the other manufacturers, like, build the engines up and they just spray it with paint. And they paint the hoses. Like, who paints hoses? We are super, super excited about this decision. And we are also really grateful that we are here at one of the less expensive... DIY yards in Florida and it just so happened that all this happened we were planning to be here for two nights just to get a little work done and do some laundry and stuff um and it just turns out that we happened to be here when we needed to do some pretty major work and get a haul out so that we can deal with getting this new engine in um we're very grateful that we are in a spot that's not going to cost us an arm and a leg and also allows us to do it ourselves so that was just plain old luck <laughs> so next time we're actually going to install the new engine